the, the second Sunday after Pentecost, the Sunday within the octave of Corpus Christi. And the epistle for the second Sunday, taking that of the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3. Here again in San Antonio. Dearly beloved, wonder not if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in himself. In this we have known the charity of God, because he hath laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He that hath the substance of this world, and shall see his brother in need, and shall shut up his bowels from him, how doth the charity of God abide in him? And the little children, let us not love in word nor in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 14. At that time, Jesus spoke to the Pharisees this parable. A certain man made a great, great supper and invited many, and he sent his servant at this hour of the supper to say to them that were invited that they should come, for now all things are ready. And they began all at once to make excuse. The first said to him, I have bought a farm, and must needs go out, and to see it. I pray thee, hold me excused. Another said, I have bought five old yoke of oxen, and I go to try them. I pray thee, hold me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. And the servant returning told these things to his board. Then, then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the feeble, and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. But I say unto you that none of these men that were invited shall taste of my supper. That's for the words of today, Holy God. So, in the name of the Father, Amen. Considerations in this time of Pentecost, which is the time of the great battle between the time that our Lord Jesus Christ commanded his apostles to go out and preach to all nations until the end of the world, and then the actual coming of uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, on that day of Pentecost and the actual return of our Lord Jesus Christ in the last day uh, on the 24 Sundays after Pentecost after 2,000 years after the res after that Pentecost we're getting now closer to the time of the judgment and uh, they're, they're here in the, within the octave of Corpus Christi and a few considerations here in the, so the sacred epistle of this time between the what are we going to be judged on about what are we judged and St. John makes it very clear the other one or not that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the, the, the brethren. He that loveth not abideth in death. And one of the mysteries of our world today is we are in the age of death. All around us is death. And St. John explains exactly why. How do we get to an age of abortion? Millions of abortions every, every single year all throughout the whole world. How do we get to the age of the death of marriages? How do we get to the age of the death of our church, the death of the Holy Sacrifice in the Mass, the death of the priesthood, the death that is all around us, and all the death of the wars and terrible things happening throughout the world? There is coldness and death all around us. And it is explained very simply by St. John. He that loveth not abideth in death. What's the preparation for death? Loving not, not loving. When there is not love of the brethren inside of our hearts, then death comes. And we have to remember that when, when our church was founded 2,000 years ago, there was death all throughout the entire world. The whole Roman Empire was filled with wickedness. There was viciousness everywhere. Well, what happened? Our Lord Jesus Christ brought a few 12, 12 men, and he brought a few different few families and a few souls that he sent throughout the whole world to bring the divine love to the world. This love has to be inside the heart. So on the outside, there is death, and there is death all around us. But what is the cause of this death? He that abideth not in love 
is brings about death, says St. Paul. And he that hated his brother on the inside is already dead. And this is something we deal with in our world today. There is hatred all around us. And all that's happening, and when we run into difficulties and crosses, is the hatred simply comes out. The hatred that's already there. He that abideth not in love is in death. St. John says it very clearly and very simply. We know that to pass from death to life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not abideth in death. Death does not... Death, when, 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 a, when a body dies, it simply falls apart, and each part fends for itself. The heart fends for itself, the bones fend for themselves, the hands and feet fend for themselves, and they decay at different rates. So the heart and the stomach decay much more quickly than the bones. But all decay, because they're just fending for themselves. But when the soul is together, holding the body together, there is a, there's a life principle of the soul. And the life principle of the supernatural of, of God, the life principle of the faith, is called caritas, charity. And the love of the neighbor is an essential part of our nature as human beings. And one of the challenges that we have is, there's death all around us. We see death everywhere. But what has happened? There is not love in the Pope. There is not love in the bishops. There is not love in the priests. There is not love in the faithful. There is not love in the Catholics. And therefore, this love is not spreading throughout the world. And all we have is death all around us. Now, 2,000 years ago, the world was filled with death also. There was death everywhere. There was, there was evil of homosexuality, as there is today. There was evil of, of, of killing of babies. There was evil of violence everywhere. There was the evil of vicious hearts all throughout the entire world. And what happened? Our Lord Jesus Christ sent 12 apostles, Matthias, to take the place of Judas. And he sent the 12 apostles to the ends of the earth to carry the divine love on the inside. And now the divine love that's on the inside, what happens to it? If I have the divine love on the inside, then I will necessarily love my brethren. And then St. Paul and St. John making it clear what that exactly means. He continues in the epistle. In this we have known that the chariot of God, because he hath laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And here is the mystery about our faith. How do we conquer the devil? How do we conquer our enemies? Lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to be willing to lay down our lives for our brothers. And this is a great challenge, because you remember in the first days of our church, every pope was put to death. Every bishop was put to death. Every priest was put to death. And every faithful that was discovered to be faithful was put to death. That's the beginning of our church. Why were they put to death? Because they were surrounded by hatred. More hatred than we even have now. They were surrounded by hatred. What did they do? They brought the divine love and the divine truth to those that hated them. And we had to bring the divine love and divine truth to those that hate us. Because remember that there is a great problem of, 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 of hatred for our brethren in the world today. There's a great problem of hatred of our brethren in the family today, great problem of hatred of brethren in marriages, great problem of hatred of, marriage, hatred of the brethren inside of our own families. The hatred of the brethren is like what we breathe in and out. In fact, it's a theme of all the movies. Why is Clint Eastwood a hero? Because he hates someone and he goes out and has vengeance and he kills them. And so we find that hatred is the theme of the movies. Hatred is the theme of the, of the stories of our heroes. Hatred we understand. It's deep inside of us. But our Lord, but St. John says, you must love the brethren. What did Jesus Christ do? We all know what he did. Every year we repeat Good Friday and our contemplations and the Feast of Good Friday. Every year we, we see the victory of, 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 the, of the resurrection. Everywhere we see the effects of the victory of the resurrection, which is he sent his 12 apostles to go out and convert the world. And there was a transformation of the world. First there was hatred. Then there was the death of Christ. And then there was the resurrection, and then he sent his apostles out, and then they died, and then the faith spread, and charity conquered the world. The formula has not changed. The formula has not changed. The devil wants us to be beaten down, and when we are beaten down, we will turn to wrath ourselves, and turn to anger ourselves. But what is necessary is that we not turn to wrath, and that we not turn to anger. Of course, sometimes we have, to, we have to have a discipline. There has to be a spanking sometimes. There has to be a punishment sometimes. There has to be an imprisonment sometimes. There has to be physical acts of, of, uh, of discipline. Armies have to protect their countries and so on. This must physically happen from time to time. 
But what is inside the heart? This somehow must come out. And if there is anger, if there is hatred in the heart, it, it comes out. And we have to kill this hatred that is in the heart. We cannot have the hatred for the brethren. That's the negative side. We can't have the hatred. But St. John says, it is not enough to not hate your brethren. Because whoever does not love his brethren will always turn to hatred. All that hatred really is, is the complete absence of love. It's nothing positive about it. It's just the absence of love. Just like when you're dying of starvation, you didn't put starvation in your body. All that happened is all the nutrition went out. And when all the nutrition goes out, your body is completely unable to move. And your body is completely constricted and it loses all its weight and all its strength. You didn't receive a starvation pill. You didn't need starvation. All that happened was nutrition went out. And then St. John points out, how is it that there is hatred in the world? The hatred is of the devil. This hatred is in the world that comes from the devil. All it is, the effect of the absence of love. That's all that it is. And we have to make sure that we feel the divine love inside of us. And the love must be for the brethren. Very often it's very difficult to love our neighbors. Love those, do good to those that hate you. There must be a deep love of neighbor. And this is a natural effect of the Blessed Sacrament. It's a natural effect of the Catholic faith. The Catholic faith is supernatural. The Blessed Sacrament is supernatural. But it has a natural effect. Just like we learn in the teaching on the, the Sacrament of Extreme Unction. That Extreme Unction, you come to a man who's sick and dying. And you give him the holy oils. And many, many times we see the man be cured. We see the woman be cured. Many times. And the Father and the Church teaches us this is not a miracle. It's just a natural effect. And why does it say it's a natural effect? We sometimes scratch our heads. Why is that a natural effect? Because we human beings do not respond only to medication. We don't respond only to spankings. We don't respond only to the receiving of physical gifts. Give money to someone, and they may be more a thief than they were before. Give a spanking to someone, they may be more violent than they were before. And so, so we don't respond to spankings. We don't respond to money. We don't respond to gifts. We don't respond to the lack of gifts. What do we respond to? We respond to love. Is there love there? The love must be in the gift. The love must be in the spanking. The love must be in all the things that we do. And there is an absence of love in our world today. And this is a very deep problem for all of us. Where is the love of the brethren? Where is the love of God? The love of the love is what made the Father send the Son to this earth. The love is what made the Son die upon the cross. And the love is what made the Father and the Son send the Holy Ghost to the very ends of the earth. And the Holy Ghost is love, and He fills our hearts with His own divine nature. And what is that? Love. St. Paul says, Deus caritas est. God is charity. God is love. And the love has to enter inside of our hearts. But what happens? We have inside of us a very deep hatred. A very deep love only of ourselves. And the problem with that is, I am made out of nothing. And if I love myself, I am loving nothing. In order to properly love myself, I have to love what God made. And God made me. And the beauty that is in me and the good that is in me all comes from God. So if I ever try to love myself without God, all I'm loving is nothing. If I love myself with God, then there is a goodness in that love. And that love means if I love myself who is made by God, then I must also love the other things he made. That means I must love the brethren. And hence St. John says it most absolutely and clearly, there must be a love of the brethren. And the love of the brethren is very much missing today. And now we're in a time of a little crisis. This coronavirus stupidity, the laws shutting down our, our, our freedoms and taking away our basic natural rights and the squeezing off of our economy and, our, and, and all that remains good in our culture, which is not very much. But squeezing out causes us to want to simply survive. When we want to survive, what do we do? We turn to ourselves. This turning to ourselves is finishing the assault of the enemy. For those that have not yet turned to hate, the purpose of this attack of the devil is to turn those who have not yet turned to hate, let them turn to hate. Those who have not yet turned to complete selfishness, let them turn to selfishness. Those that have not yet given up on trying to convert the neighbor to Christ, they have let them give up on returning the neighbor to Christ and join the army of Satan by this hatred engine in their hearts. And this is one of the temptations of our particular time right now. And we can't fall for this temptation. 
St. John the Apostle tells us the Apostle of Charity, and he was a firebrand, a son of thunder. He had a very hot temper. He was one that called down fire from heaven on the enemies of God and was called the Son of Thunder because of that. And the Son of Thunder became filled with the divine charity, and charity motivated his life. He put his head upon the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ at the Last Supper, and the divine heart entered into his head, entered into his ears, entered into his mind, entered into his passions, entered into his entire being, and he became the Apostle of Charity, who was originally the Apostle of Wrath. St. John was the most angry of the Apostles, and he became the Apostle of Charity. And that this and that the charity and then he understood then how do we defeat Satan? Remember that God the Father sent the Son out of love, and he was visited with hate. He was visited with violence. He was visited with everything that Satan could throw at him. But he gave himself as a lamb to the slaughter, and as he, and as he went from as a lamb to the slaughter, what happened? He conquered the vicious heart of a thief. He conquered the vicious heart of a soldier, Saint Longinus. He conquered the vicious hearts of many of those who were there cursing him at the crucifixion. And he conquered the weak hearts, the weak hearts of his own apostles who had no strength to fight. He had to conquer their hearts also. And so let's remember in our great battle, it is a battle of caritas. It still is to this very day. And let us not fall to wrath. Let us not fall to anger. Let us not fall to an interior violence inside of our own hearts, which is a great temptation of our times. Let's make sure that we don't turn to that on the inside. It's true on the outside. Materially, we have to do certain things. We have to follow the commandments of God. We've got to do external things. But let's make sure that it is the Caritas Christi that urges us, the charity of Christ that urges us on, and not anything else. And this is one of the great battles of this particular Sunday. And this Sunday of, 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 of the second Sunday after, of, 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 after Pentecost, always during the octave of uh, Corpus Christi, the church considers the serious side. This is the sacrament of charity that we just celebrated a couple of days ago. We're in the octave of the celebration of the sacrament of, the sacrament of charity, called the Holy Eucharist. Well, charity has grave obligations. Charity is, creates great demands. And if we don't respond to charity, what is the other option? It is hatred. And therefore, St. John says in his epistle today, let us be filled with charity and not with the hatred of our brethren. We have a problem being filled with hatred. We must not be filled with hatred, but with charity. And the Caritas Christi must urge et nos and move us on. In any case, we'll close it at that. And God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.